Blessings, family. I know it's been a minute since I've been on here. Um, I've been really taking this time to focus on my studies, focus on growing myself as a believer, focus on the actual assignment that God has for me. And one of those gifts and calls that God has for me is actually the gift of prophecy. And so um, I'm going to start actually sharing with you guys some of my um, prophetic messages that the Lord shares with me because a lot of times he's ministering to me, but I definitely believe that this same message for me can definitely be um, received by you guys. So that is why I'm on here today. I want to encourage you all to, y'all, we are living in some some perilous times. Uh, things are changing and things are moving very quickly. Um, I believe that the line between what is right and what is wrong and what is good and what is evil to me is becoming more and more clear. And so I want to encourage and exhort you all that at the end of the day, what you need to do, you know, we have so many things that are coming at us as far as entertainment, social media, things like that. And I know I'm on here as well um, on YouTube, uh, giving videos, but I've really started to focus on the, the things that God personally has for me and growing who I am as a child of God. And what, like I said before, one of those gifts is the gift of prophecy. And so the thing is, you're not going to be able to truly discover who you are in Christ until you get in that alone time with God, until you start really building that intimate relationship with the Lord. And I know it's great to also sit under somebody and kind of learn from people. Um, you listen to those of us on YouTube and we encourage you and we teach you and train you. Um, but at the end of the day, you can depend or rest in no one else but God. That is your source. He is the one that is truly going to mold you into the person that you need to be. So I would say spend the majority and the bulk of your time in his presence um, just in teaching and training for what he has to give you in your word, in your relationship with him. And honestly, that's what I've been doing. And so you guys may not see me on here often unless God has a word for me or some a message that he wants me to give you. And he actually has a message today. Um, like I said before, God is speaking to me. And let me tell you something. God is always speaking. Don't ever think that there's not a time where God is not speaking. But what it is, is we have we are bombarded with so many different messages and so many different voices that a lot of times we can't really focus on God's voice and God's voice alone. And it means that you have to separate yourself. It means you have to consecrate yourself. And I remember, I think it was the beginning of 2022, hearing the word consecration. And now as I'm starting to grow a hunger, a hunger, excuse me, and a thirst for God. I'm starting to understand why he's leading me to consecrate myself. And this message is for you as well. Again, if you want to walk in who you are as a child of God, and I'm talking about the gifts and the callings that God has placed on you as, as a child of the most high, you have to consecrate yourself. You have to set yourself apart. You have to remove a lot of the distractions that the world is trying to throw at us on a constant basis. And so yesterday, uh, God actually kind of was speaking to me as a parent. Um, I have a child, my oldest son, I have two children, and my oldest son just graduated from high school um, last May. And it was such a blessing, but it was also a great struggle to get there. And the Lord yesterday really made it extremely clear why there was a more struggle than what needed to be when it came to my oldest son. And that message that he shared with me that really hit home for me, I wanna share with you guys. I actually am starting to write down the prophetic messages that the Lord gives to me. And when the Lord leads me to share it with you guys, I will um, share it with you. So you will see me reading from a screen. So this is the message, and this message is for parents. This message is for anyone who has a child, anyone who is a mother, a father, or a mother figure or father figure to children. Um, the Lord shared with me, this is the message that the Lord shared with me. So the message was, your children are going into spiritual battle too soon and unprepared. 
And the scripture that he gave me was 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33. And that is, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Mothers, fathers, parents, you are in a war. We are in a war. This world is not neutral ground. You are fighting on enemy territory. Outside of the sanctity of your homes, there is a war being fought for the mind, the will, and the emotions of all men, women, and children. What environment you surround yourself and your children with will result in either victory or casualty in your lives. The enemy is busy and systematic. He has infiltrated the world's financial systems, schools, churches, and workforce. And this lawlessness has been at work secretly for a very long time. As time is drawing near, however, this secret work has become more open in order to bring to light what is being done in the dark. Unfortunately, my people still choose to continue in ignorance by not separating themselves and most importantly, their children from among them. I have blessed you with children because I, the Lord, desire a holy seed upon this earth. The enemy's desire is no different. He desires an unholy seed and he will use the vulnerability and the malleability of your children to build his army. Your desire to raise godly seed is not a matter of wishful thinking, but a matter of investment. Understand that key word, investment. The enemy wishes to invest his plan and purpose into your children. He does this through schools, peers, music, and entertainment your children consume on a daily basis. You need to ask yourself how much of God or Satan is being invested in your children. If your children go to a secular school, let's break this down into like math, okay? So that he, he wanted me to really see this investment on a more mathematical, more logic and practical scale. He said, if your children go to a secular school for eight hours a day, listen to secular music four hours a day, are on TikTok for four hours a day, are around their ungodly peers for eight to 10 hours a day, and yet go to church for two hours a week, which influence will be greater on your children, me or the world? My word says to train your children up in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. I want to make clear what does it mean to train. To train up means to give the necessary preparation so that a person will reach the standard required for a particular job or activity. Training requires three things, time, separation, and exclusivity in order to properly prepare someone for a particular assignment. And family, you need to ask yourself, who is doing the majority of the training of your children? My word says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The enemy is not going to easily give up his schemes and his plans in order to just let you win. You have to fight. The enemy knows he has a short time left and he has actually amped up his tactics and efforts. Whoever is caught off guard will be a casualty of war, regardless of whether they're my child or his. It says in my word that my people perish for their lack of knowledge. Not the enemy, they're already blind. God, the enemy's children are already blind. He has them already. But my word says, my people perish. He said, as long as the enemy knows you remain in ignorance, he will continue to steal, kill, and destroy you, your destinies, 
and the future of your generations. Wake up. You are in enemy territory. Satan is using your ignorance to corrupt and destroy your children. Pray. You need to pray. You need to seek my face and my guidance and my wisdom on where you should have your children trained up because it will influence whether their life will be one of perpetual victory or perpetual victimhood. Remember, it takes a village to raise a child. If that village honors me and it glorifies my name, it will strengthen your children in the things of the Lord. However, if that village despises me and rebels against me and my word, it will weaken your children in the things of the Lord. Parents, you need to choose your village wisely. What is your village? It is your area of influence. It is your environment of influence. He said, this is what you must understand. My word is law. Whatever I establish in the heavens, whatever I establish here on earth must come to pass. My law serves as a guideline that is meant to bring you victory and success on your journey in this war. The enemy knows my law. He knows my word and he uses your ignorance and your disobedience of my law to attack you and have an open door to attack your children. When you send your vulnerable children into the world unprepared and immature, the enemy gains the upper hand in, the cu in corrupting their character. He wanted me to understand this in not only my son's life, but in if you're going through this with your children, the reason why many of you are struggling with many issues and problems with your children, confusion, disobedience, rebellion, suicide, depression, all those different disrespect. He says it is because their souls are being indoctrinated and infiltrated by the poison of the enemy. He said, remember the parable of the seed and the sower. Every seed that is sown must bear fruit. So you have to think about the seeds that are being sown into your children, not only when they're in your presence, but when they're outside of your presence. He said, understand that the enemy wants, wants first dibs on corrupting the character of your children so that they never are able to walk in the fullness of, in, of who I have called them and created them to be. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy any destiny, any plan, and any hope of a bright future before, before anyone else can get their hands on them. And he said, yes, I am powerful and I can ultimately save their souls. But you must understand that there have been many unnecessary casualties and setbacks in the lives of my children worldwide because they were sent out into battle too soon and ill prepared. He said they were like thrown as sheep to wolves and therefore that is why they're being devoured. He said, remember my word when I sent out the 12 disciples, I gave them this command. I am sending you like sheep among wolves. Therefore, pay attention. I need you to be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. He said, you must take back dominion over your home and your children. I have given you the authority to walk in power. How do you have this authority? How do you walk in power? How do you gain dominion? Jesus provided us the perfect, perfect example when he was tempted while he was in the wilderness. He said, know my word, walk in my word and train your children in my word. He said, then they can be sent out into the war with the weaponry and protection that they need to fight. He said, we are in a war. I kept hearing we are in a war. Do not allow your children to become a casualty. 
That is the word that he spoke to me and me understanding why I struggled so much with my older son who is called of God. But why I struggle so much is because for the majority of his education, he was brought up in a public school system that did not honor and glorify the Lord. And so therefore, he there was a constant internal battle between what was being taught and instilled in him at home and what was being indoctrinated and infiltrated in him in the world. May this word be a blessing. It doesn't mean that all hope is gone for your children. God is a God of hope. But understand that the reason when we don't obey God's word, because here's the thing. I kept hearing the Lord tell me to remove your son from public school, take your son out of public school. But I kept hearkening and listening to the voice of my son for him to remain in public school because he wanted to be with his peers and therefore I disobeyed what the spirit told me. And in that, while God still has my child, there is suffering that I had to go through. There is needless suffering that my son has had to experience because of our disobedience. And so I want you to be encouraged. If you are in a situation and you know that you need to remove your children and put them into a God-fearing environment, then pray, seek God's face and ask for an open door and for him to move on your behalf and to show you favor so that your children can be surrounded by a village who honors and glorifies the name of the Lord. I believe he will do it for you. I pray that every word that was spoken today by the spirit of the living God bring forth much fruit in the life of the listener and that may every word that was not spoken today by the one true and living God be cast by the wayside. This is for him who has ears to hear in the powerful name of Yeshua. I will talk to you all soon. Love you very much. Bless.